Hey Arnold Vlogs! I really need to work on my intros. So, without further ado, let's get into Eugene's pet. In this episode, it's show and tell at Arnold's school, and everything's going well. Eugene's brought this goldfish, which he's had... I don't know if it's a goldfish, but it's a pet fish. He's had it for months, brought him joy and happiness and all as well. Then Arnold brings a yo-yo, and he's doing a yo-yo trick for show and tell, and his yo-yo trick accidentally causes the yo-yo to go flying off the string up into the air land in Eugene's fish tank and it causes this one of the equipped things like this little mini statue in his aquarium to fall right on top of the goldfish so now Eugene doesn't have a pet and Arnold feels bad so what he does is he decides he's gonna get Arnold help Eugene find a new pet since helping Eugene out went so well the last time you did it. But anyway, so there's so he tries to get him a new pets to some humorous slash unsuccessful attempts. And then Arnold decides that he's gonna just basically have a he's gonna he explains he goes to the local aquarium, which we saw in a previous episode. He explains Eugene's case. And they let him adopt one of the fish, which gets eaten by a shark when his back is turned. And poor Eugene, that kid cannot catch a break. And it's kind of interesting because back when I talked about Eugene in the, the episode where we learned that so much of Eugene's misery is unintentionally caused by Arnold, I said this seemed like a one-note character, like a character that outside of the occasional, like, oh, poor Eugene, like, there you can't really do a full episode, but... I really connected with this episode personally because growing up I also had some fish and fish don't make the best of pets because you know they can you know they usually don't last very long at least in my experience or the experience of everyone I've talked to and ironically the way my fit goldfish passed away was similar to how Eugene's did I had but anyway so I named my two goldfish Spot and Spotty because I had these little black spots on them and I liked them. And one one time I went on away on vacation and I had, yeah, oh yeah, I remember I had the little tank and everything, but I mean, while I was on vacation, we were in like one of these gift shops areas and I saw these two, this cool, one or two cool looking seashells and I thought, wow, this would look great in my fish's tank. It was this seashell and it had all these little holes in it. And I brought it back and I propped it up in the tank like this. Sorry, like, you know, like right side up. Yep, this is what my phone looks like. One day, one of the fish died and it turns out that it actually tried to swim in between the two little cracks inside the shell and it got stuck and it suffocated and unfortunately passed away. And then another fish died because the tank got dirty and it I kind of empathize with Eugene losing his fish. You know, particularly because it's Eugene, and Eugene's not the strong character. He's the young, fragile character, and, you know, doesn't have many people close to him in his life. So losing, like, a pet, someone that means so much to him, it's something I can understand. I, again, I also... I do enjoy... I do enjoy Eugene getting the... The attempts to get Eugene a new pet from when they go to the pet store and all the pets are kind of hurting him and the pet store owner just clearly doesn't care she just wants to get paid and go home <laughs> I enjoy the dream sequence Arnold had there's a lot of great dream sequences on the show like that I'm good I'm probably gonna keep citing them because they're really good they're really surreal really creative there's another dream sequence in the next episode which I'll talk about but, but yeah, just kudos to whoever designs these dream sequences. They, It's like, that and Sid's Legends are two things that the show, and Helga, it's Arnold fancies. There's these things the show repeats, and there's a part of me that's like, this should get old, this should get tiresome, but they always find new ways to create it fresh. Like, Helga punching, like, how many different ways can we have Helga punch Weez and Ed? Or how many different legends can we have? How many different dream sequences do we have? It was also, there was a bit of dark comedy in this episode when Eugene adopts an imaginary invisible, an invisible hippo, and he's just breaking down trying to keep his sanity, 
And it's just like, on one end, it's amusing. On the other end, it's just depressing because you know on the inside, he's just complete denial that his fish passed away. It kind of made me wonder because on Edda and Eddie, Plank's literally the, this piece of wood with two eyes and a smiley face. And Johnny will talk to it like it's a real person. And he'll say what Plank's saying. And, you know, they kind of play with the idea that maybe Plank's sentient, maybe he's real. But it d did lead me to wonder this crazy, like, I'm sure cartoon conspiracy theory has thought of this already. Or, but what, what if Johnny's Plank is actually Johnny's way of coping with something? Like, what if he had a friend or a family member close to him named Plank, and he lost him and his way of coping with said person is by just creating this piece of wood? Like, I'm sure I'm not the only one who's thought of this. I'm sure other people have gone online create their own theories and tragic backstories, but it's just something I find fascinating and I'm, I need to look that up. As far as Eugene goes, he just has the worst of luck. I mean, from losing his fish to losing his fish to the cat. Seriously, that cat was like wandering around the grave forever. Why did no one do anything? And the bit where the fish gets eaten at the end, I'm like, poor Eugene, like, what luck. Although I do have to wonder, why would you put a shark in the tank with other fish? Like, wouldn't you want to separate the animals to make sure that, you know, if you're having animals in a shared tank, that you don't have the same animals that eat each other? Like, because, like, in Finding Dory, like, all the animals in those tanks, like, you know, they didn't have any cannibal problems. Like, they were all kept separate. Or, heck, I've been to aquariums before, and I'm pretty sure you have to, that's a large part of the decision-making process. As you sit down, you decide what fish go in which tank, and you make sure that, None of them eat each other, so things go well. I never knew that you could adopt fish in an aquarium before. It's really cool. I don't know. It's just a fascinating fact. But as you can tell, I enjoyed this episode. I mean, I could gripe about how you'd think Arnold would learn from the last time he tried to help Eugene that helping Eugene doesn't. But, you know, it leads to some entertaining stuff. This show isn't trying to be that serialized so i'm not gonna harp on it too much and plus you know there's always the possibility arnold just can't resist the urge to people because that's the kind of person that arnold is arnold's the kind of person who would go out of his way to help people even if he fails he's the kind of if at first you don't succeed try try again and we've seen him stick up for eugene before in the trial so it wouldn't be plausible if he does and since it technically is his fault it wouldn't surprise me if he'd try to help him again. So the next episode is Monkey Business. In this one, Helga learns in class that if you come into contact with a monkey, you c there's this ancient legend of a disease that you could acquire from said monkey. So Helga dismisses it, but then she gets, later she's like watching the circus money and it licks her arm. Helga starts to dismisses it first but then she starts to realize she's having a lot of the symptoms that she learned about in class and she starts to wonder oh my gosh am I getting this disease am I becoming a monkey am I gonna die from this monkey disease and she starts breaking down she makes amends she writes a will gives stuff away and you know she's on she thinks she's on her deathbed and she asks her Arnold and just as she's about to tell Arnold her feelings for him Phoebe walks in and tells her that Helga doesn't have a disease, it's a bunch of baloney. Helga, in classic Helga fashion, just throws out whatever she was about to say and just tells Arnold, like, she's a jerk, but then she decides, you're okay. And yeah, I really like this episode. I mean, I am a huge Helga fan, as I've mentioned, like, so many times. And once again, this is something I could relate to because psychologically, I think we tend to, sometimes we tend to imagine we have cer a certain condition, we'll imagine all the symptoms and we'll make them worse than they really are. Like, as of recording this, I have a little bit of what's known as TMJ, which is when your jaw hurts, and it's not that bad now, but it was really bad like a couple weeks ago because my jaw was popping a lot and I was a little curious about it, so I did some research online and I found out that you might have TMJ. Side effects include such and such and such and such. And I was like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, I have TMJ. 
So then I started worrying about it and worrying about it actually made it worse. And so then I, once I realized that, I stopped worrying about it, took a couple, an Advil like once a day and then I was fine. So hell good, it is reasonable. And it does provide some interesting character drama as it does lead Helga to almost confess her feelings for me. I mean, there's that psychological feeling of like, because this is a serialized show where things relatively stay the same, nothing really that life-changing happens to the characters, like they aren't really forced into a situation where they're forced to change. So when you put, like, this isn't like Star of the Forces of Evil where there's constant things shaking the show up so the characters are constantly changing. Like, this is back in the 90s where Helga's going to say the same. But it was interesting to see her come close to changing. Like, she almost confessed her feelings to Arnold. Like, if Phoebe had just waited, like, another second, Helga would have admitted that she loves Arnold. But alas, that we have to save that for another day. And, like, in the back of my mind, I, like, knew, okay, Phoebe's probably going to bust in at the last minute and ruin the moment, but, you know, I couldn't help but be on the edge of my seat and then be like, ah, oh, come on, when she didn't. I did like, though, that Helga said she was okay. That was a nice little bit of, I don't want to say character development because this is, doesn't seem like the kind of show that's interested in de character development, but it was a refreshing change from the typical Helga about to say something nice and then she throws it out and just says something negative to Arnold. And once again, there was a great dream sequence I, it was very surreal from the lighting colors the use of the townspeople it again like when this is over i'm probably gonna have to do like a top 10 or something of my top 10 favorite all dream sequences because there are a lot they're surreal they really dive deep into the characters and i just love them um little tidbits i re remembered from this one we got to see phoebe's house for the first time i don't think we've ever seen her house before in the show but we did get to see the porch. We did get to see what looks like a room. It looks like Phoebe sleeps on the floor. And we also, I think this is the first time we've learned that Helga's dad sells beepers. I knew he did a business, but I don't think they ever specified what it was. But yeah. And then the last episode I'm going to talk about is Big Caesar. This is another Legends episode. This one concerns a fish named Big Caesar, who supposedly has been around since the dawn of the dinosaurs and due to plate tectonic shifts he got trapped in this little lake area in the middle of the city in what i assume is central park i could be wrong and so anyway there's this big fishing tournament coming up and arnold and gerald are dead set on catching big caesar and grandpa gets involved he recounts his old war stories which say so anyway, and Gerald get onto the lake and in an amusing bit of fate, the only boat available left is this little swan boat. And surprise, surprise, they have, like, just at their lowest point, they have Caesar on a line and pulls them around, but eventually they're able to capture him. But out of guilt, realizing this isn't right, this isn't fair, we're kind of being doing animal cruelty, or in this, wouldn't it, would it actually, wouldn't it be fish cruelty in this case? But anyway, they let him go, they take their pride, and Grandpa back when he was young he encountered big caesar and his pole got stuck in him so before they let him go they take that out of big caesar's side and give it to grandpa as the proof that we saw big caesar and again another charming episode it reminded me a lot of this one episode of the simpsons where homer and marge go for marriage counseling and the area where they're by has this giant catfish lake and homer hears this legends about this fish seemingly uncatchable and he sneaks off, winds up catching it, and then lets it go because it represents how he basically screwed over Marge. And so he basically just throws it back in the lake to prove that he Marge cares more. He cares more about Marge than about catching a fish. It also kind of reminded me a bit of Old Man the Sea, the guy catching the big fish but loses it before he gets home. Like even the way they capture the fish, Big Caesar kind of reminded me of Old Man in the Sea. And again, like, like any episode, it was predictable, but again, just, there's such charm and heart to it that I really enjoyed it. And I really am liking these Legends episodes, like, again, because they, and 
particularly this one, because a lot of times when we do these Legends episodes, usually it's not what it seems. Usually Sid will, and Gerald, who... Some great voice work, by the way. I love whenever they tell these legends because the voice actor for Gerald and Sid get to really have a lot of fun, go over the top. The animators can do all this different styles of animation and big over-the-top animation that they can't do in the rest of the show because it's pretty grounded. But yeah, I really enjoy whenever they do a legend. And I like how, unlike the previous times where they hear a legend and then it turns out it's not what it seems, it's something trivial, or they don't discover the legend, but, it, but maybe it really does exist. For once, they actually did hear a legend. There was a big fish. I mean... Whether or not it's been around since the dawn of time, debatable, but there was a big fish. And I thought that was kind of nice how for once there was a... And, you know, on top of that, we also got one of the Grandpa flashbacks, which was also good. And, and I love the design of the fish. It's freaking huge, and it's just... And it has a smirk on its face, and oh my gosh, it's such good animation on it. And as always, you had Arnold and Gram Gra Grandma Arnold's grandparents in the back doing their thing, small doses. Like, I love how Grandma's a pirate. I love how it turns out the parrot's actually real. Arnold and Gerald using their clothes as sail, both as sails, was very creative. And, yeah, I just... I don't have a ton to say on this episode other than that it's just another Fun Legends episode. And... I think I'm going to cut it off here. Um, next time I'll do Ransom and Miss Perfect. And then once those are done, next up we have Arnold's Halloween. Really looking forward to that. The 20-minute episodes tend to be really good on this show. So, do you like fishing? Do you have ever had a fish as a pet? And have you ever encountered anything like what Helga went through? Share your thoughts on those or any additional thoughts you have on these episodes or what anything I said. And stay tuned next time where I talk about two more episodes before going into that big Halloween episode. So, see you later.